asking price. They're all just above. So right. it's and I, and also Santinez area. That's a pretty expensive market. Recently, it was a five-acre property came up for sale for nine eighty. Okay, it, just, it caught my attention. I thought it was two two hundred thousand under market. There were I think eight nine offers, including one of mine. We offered one point one seven, and we didn't get it. Someone bid it a little higher. It was listed at I think it was nine sixty or nine eighty, and it, it was all cash too. The people who bought it. Yeah, that's yeah, so, <laughs> a lot of those are. Yeah. So the market's hot. Do you have a sense from these buyers if it's uh, pretty much the same buyers that are doing this, or is it just a lot of different investors? No, I, okay, out? I do have a sense in Santa Maria. I know, I know who's. There are some investors. Not many, 20, 30 percent maybe. The rest are home home oh, buyers, home first buyers. time home buyers buying the FHA, or they're or they're coming in conventional. Uh, some investors pay cash, but most don't. They put 25, 30 percent down. So, okay, so that's they're, Santa they're Maria. In, okay, they're bidding higher, but they've got a loan behind them. Right. And they're coming through the loan. So, yeah. Okay. So the so the home buyers coming in. I mean, that seems to be a signaling, a fair turn in the market. Yeah, you know, because if they, now you've got a lot of home buyers coming in, investors can't, investors don't know who can't compete against that. They can't. They can't compete against that. No, they can't. And, you know, before a year or so, I don't think home buyers weren't buying, right? Or couldn't buy. And now if they can buy, they don't need, they don't need a 40% discount. Right. They can get a 5% discount. Right. right. You had a guy in here that, that was uh, selling bulk REO packages. A couple months back. Right, we had about you know, three different. Well, Gario packages. What if anybody done anything with any of those folks? We're going to talk a little bit about that as we move on and have some of the horror stories that are dealing with not that particular one, but one a little bit farther back. And I'm going to say, gee, that's too bad, Dan. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about that. Um, do you want to mention anything, Andrew, about the multi-unit uh, apartments that you're kind of digging no, let's, into? Let's get, we can do that another day. Let's okay. sort of stick to the topic of okay. sort of getting, you know, I'd like to at some point, but let's, okay. let's get to it and work sort of on a... So on one, a of the, one of the things that uh, I asked Curtis and Cindy towards the end of that video series is, have either of you done any tax liens? And the first thing they said was, no, my cousin or somebody had, but we really haven't. And I said, well, why haven't you? And they said... We just haven't had the time. And I've been to a, a lot of seminars, a lot of seen, you know, a lot of successful investors and asked them the same thing. And everyone that I've asked, unless they're really into tax liens, say, no, I haven't because I just haven't had enough time. And, you know, you've got to choose your battle where you're going to spend your time. And I just haven't gone there. Okay. So there's a theme going on there. We're going to talk about that as we get towards the end of this. But that's the theme that I hear is I don't have time. And, you know, if you're doing stock in your stock market, the first thing they say is, well, expand your portfolio, you know, and get your bank or whatever. So that's one of the reasons that we're going to pick up that topic as we get to the end of this. Did you have a question there, Katarina? Yeah. Um, Cindy and Curtis Squires, they are doing wholesaling and they're doing it successfully. So I know they are. So I would that's recommend that, I would... that you call them and, and right. find out you know, exactly where, what yeah. they're doing. Right. So you have no relationship with the broker, where the broker Right, the selling at, broker is, yeah. The selling broker from the bank. And um, what else did they say? They, they did say, the they did say they got, like, one of the past six deals they did was from people like us that went out there and found a deal and brought it to them, and they helped everybody through it, and then they got part of the profit. So my guess is there is a lot of competition, and that's why they would like to see more of us join as a team because it takes a lot of offers out there to finally land something that they say yes on. Right, it does. I mean, I think it's, yeah, I mean, I was here before 12 offers that sort of going great right with 12 to 1. And well, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got four or five acceptances that's coming my way. Right. Pretty quick. Um, yeah, it didn't happen. It has not happened. Yeah, there's so two I, things. I it's, well, I think something else might be. It is not that. I gather too, there's quite a lot more input. I don't know if anybody else heard this, that the FDIC is pushing the banks to stop holding on to these properties. They're sort of reluctant to release a lot of them to show it comes up across cost of the loss. But, uh, well, it also drives the market down if you release a lot. If you release a lot, it does drive it down. But the FDIC is in look, you know, the banks are short on assets and sell it. Right? Sell it. Get them. 
get, get these off the books. One of the reasons that you might be experiencing as much difficulty as you are is the area that you're making offers in and also how you're making the offers. I mean, they made a pretty big deal about a standard procedure going through to, to be able to pick out something that's worth making an offer on. Right. And so, you know, the more we dig into that and communicate with them and get clear on that, I think your odds will get better. Good. Well, yeah, I think it's better. Okay, because it's all on the, it's on the videos. Mm -hmm. You know, the information's on the videos that we got here last month. And there's information coming through on the emails and whatnot. So, personally, I haven't had the time to dig into it. I've spent all my time just dealing with the properties that I've got right now. Trying to get them online, get them rented, get through the problems that I've got with them. So, uh, but I do plan on spending more time on the wholesale because it's, you know, when you run out of money, there's nothing left to do. You've got to make it somehow. Yeah. Okay? Um, one of the things that uh, has been kind of like a big fallacy is that you buy a bunch of properties and you've got all this passive income and you can go to the beach or something. I'm up to 12 or 15 properties right now and my goal is about 30 properties and then buy, you know, sell a couple a year and just keep turning them over. And even at 15 properties, I'm realizing, you know, you have to manage the property managers. It takes a lot of time to deal with all this stuff. A lot. And so uh, it's a full-time job. If you're a lawyer and you want to keep your career and you think you're going to be an investor and have a bunch of properties, you're going to have to either have some kind of middle manager dealing with your property managers or you better get out of properties and do something that takes a lot less time. It's, it's a full-time job. Here's an example of uh, the Norris Group. And this guy uh, is down in Riverside, California. And he does a lot of uh, properties. He's the main person that's kind of predicted what the values are going to be in California as they go up and down. Last name's Norris? Yeah. First name is? Bruce. Bruce. Thank you. Okay. So Bruce Norris is looked at by many, many people as somebody who really is smart, has been in the business a long time, and has figured out a lot of what's going on. And as this market continues to change and it cycles through, he finally got in and started buying properties here recently in the last year. And his plan was to rehab them and sell them and move on, flip them. And when the new appraisal laws came out, it made it difficult for him to get the values that he thought he could get because they were not valuing the properties as much as they used to because they wouldn't let the the appraisers that the mortgage companies have be so in such a close relationship, he finally went, well, you know what? I can't just flip these things and get rid of them. I'm actually going to have to hang on to these properties and do a buy, fix, and hold. Now, as the market continues to pick up, he will be able to turn these things over, but he's even had to change his strategy because not only do the cycles change, but the laws change, you know, and kind of throw off your plan. So, you know, wholesaling right now, he is a very good thing. Chris, uh, Curtis, and Cindy had mentioned if you were to buy and hold right now in this market, you might get 9% interest. When the market picks up, you're going to get the equity on top of that 9% return, I should say, not interest, but return on your money. Okay? Good person, uh, Bruce Norris. I would be following him as well, dig into his website, get as much information as you can. Curtis and Cindy, since they work in the California market, are certainly people you want to track and see what's going on with them. They've gone through bankruptcy, they're bouncing back and learning the cycles. You know, if you want to work the California market, these are people we have to follow because they're on it all the time. What area is um, Norris? He's Riverside. So Riverside, San Bernardino. He's really kind of the same area that Curtis and Cindy are working. What name do you call Cindy and Curtis? Um, Cindy and Curtis. <laughs> 